This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 2, and verse 60 through 61. Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of lions. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rechak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth in sincerity. Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rechak Wadash, Barak Adam, to use a quantum. Walking, walk, walk, you know, you elders, you brothers, you sisters, the hopeful elect out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence to make your calling and election sure. And of course, keeping faith in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His beloved Son, our Lord, and our Savior, and our King, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, in these last days, in these perilous times that we are living in. This is Brother Peshai, Ban Yashala, and it's be a quick lesson through the Spirit and power. Of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai on miraculous deliverance, man. All right, Daniel and the lion's den. All right, it's like a land back lesson on what I did yesterday, you know, going to the persecution of the saints. All right, and us that believe in this truth, that believe in the Most High God, Yahweh, His Son, Yahweh Shai, you know, we're striving for the truth even unto death. All right, the Most High gonna fight for us. Man, you have to have that faith, that courage, that belief, that bravery. All right, you have to endure, man. In this faith and this truth. And we gotta always remember the, the accounts of our forefathers, our foreparents, all right, that put their trust in the Most High God, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, and how the Most High came through for them all the time. You see? So I pray to be uplifting and motivational through the Spirit to continue on in this faith and this truth. Because we're gonna get persecuted, yeah. A lot of us gonna get thrown into prisons, contrition camps. But we're going to be betrayed. There's going to be a lot of things going on. But in the midst of it, let's focus on miraculous deliverances, man. All right? Because we have to believe in these miracles in these last days. Um, the brother Aliyah did a lesson. I didn't get to check it out yet. But I seen the um, the title of it, you know, through the Spirit. The Heavenly Father will show miracles here in these last days. And He will. You know, Aram Tazah, I could check that video lesson out right after I finish doing this through the Spirit. You know, so in this um, lesson, I'm going to get the account. And um, Bell and the Dragon. Now, this is another account of Daniel getting thrown in the lion's den. And uh, this is the time under Cyrus the, um, the Great. Okay. And this is what the scholars, you know, call Daniel the 14th chapter. All right. It's out of the Apocrypha through the Spirit. And in this account, he was in it for six days. You see? The other time, he was only in it for, um, I believe, a day. But the most I delivered him the same with the angel. But this time, it gets more and more, you know, uh, it's more that happens in this account. Okay, you have, um, I'm, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it through the spirit. All right, but these are two separate accounts. All right, the first one's under, under Darius, and this one's under uh, Cyrus the Persian, or Cyrus the Great. Okay, so let's read it through the spirit. Before I get that, let's read this because we have a lot of enemies. All right, Esau, Edom, even our own people, heathens, whatever, that want to do us harm. And they, and they devise a lot of things in their mind against us. They got plans for us, man. We're on that red list. All right, we're a major threat to the NWO. They want to grab us up and put us to death. They want to torture us. That's in Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. They said they, they, they literally counsel this amongst themselves, man. Let's try his faith with, you know, with, with tortures. And the roughly paraphrase in that scripture in, the, um, in Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. All right, but let's read this very fast. Proverbs 19, verse 21. There are many devices in a man's heart or his mind. The word there for heart in Hebrew is love, which means mind. It says, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand you see that so counsel takes place in the heavens then it plays out in the um the physical realm all right the third dimension all right it takes the counsel takes place in the fourth dimension it's the, uh, the third heaven but then it plays out in the physical all right and this third dimensional realm that we live in it. so the counsel of the lord shall stand man so the most side is what is who can be against us man all right what did isaiah say who's my adversary all right let me get that right fast. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 8. It says, He is near. Let's read verse 7. It says, For the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. So we got to approach in these last days, and we got to approach it like the three holy children, man. Meshach, Shredek, Abednego. 
All right. And Ananias, as a rise to Mishael, they, they went to that fiery furnace praising Yahweh Bashim al Shai. And listen, brothers, we're already catching hell. We're going through tribulation. We're already suffering. But it's about the, but the Lord about to turn that heat up. Okay. He's about to turn it seven times more. You see? A complete amount of times more. We have to approach it praising him, thanking him. Like Job said, though though he slay me, let what I, though he slay me, yet will I maintain my trust in him. Job also said, What? Shall we receive good in the most high, not evil? So remember this, brothers. A lot of things we be going through in these times, it may seem like damn, this is, you know, but what is written in the scriptures, um, Apostle Paul wrote this in the book of Corinthians. The most high not give you more than what you could bear. He's gonna make a way for you to escape. All right, let's keep faith, man. No matter what, we're not gonna be ashamed, man. When they grab us up, try to harm us, man, the most high got us. And the safe we are, are martyrs. Some of us will be martyrs. Yeah, we know that. All right. Some of us may get beheaded. No, not me. Some of us will get beheaded. But some of the prophecy um released 20th chapter. But we have to remember what it says, and they lived. How are you gonna get beheaded and live? You will get raised from the dead, my brother. <laughs> remember, it says that. And they lived and reigned with a mashak a thousand years. That same verse, man. All right, so we're not gonna be ashamed, you know. So let's let's focus on deliverance. Let's read verse eight. He is near that justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Who's out? I mean, look, pull up. Esau, bring it. <laughs> bring it. Why verse nine? Behold, the Lord Yahweh, Bashimal Shai, will help me because we have a God, man. We have a power. We have a Savior, His Son Yahweh Shai, right? Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they, they, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. You see that? So all praise Yahweh Bashimah Shah. Let's read verse 10. Who is among you that feared the Lord, that obeyed the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and have no light? Let him trust in the name of Yahweh Bashimah Shah and stay upon his power, man. You see? So we're going to trust in Yahweh Bashimah Shah, point blank, period, man. Look at the account now through the spirit, right? We're going to read um, Bell and the Dragon. Like I said, this is a, another account, all right? <clears throat> what happened at the end of the sixth chapter is a, if it, it's a different account of him getting thrown in the lion's den or under, the, under um, Darius. This this time, you got thrown in for six days. The first time was for envy of his peers and things that initiated this time. And we're going to read it. All right, this time, this during the time of Cyrus the Persian or Cyrus the Great. All right, so Bell and Dragon 1 and 1. We're going to read this whole chapter. All right, make some more precepts in the midst of it. All right. And the king Astyages was gathered to his fathers, and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. And Daniel conversed with the king and was honored above all his friends. So Daniel was, he had a high position. Okay, you could remember that if you read the different accounts in the book of Daniel, you know, after the writer on the wall, things of that nature. You know, um, he got boosted up, but, you know, Belshazzar, he got put to death that night. All right. Even into the Persian Empire, you know, him and in, in um, who was uh, uh, Meshach and Abednego, they had high positions in um, from the time of Babylon, 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 the Babylonian Empire leading to the Persian Mede Empire. All right. So right here saying that he was conversing with the king, with Cyrus, and he was honored above all Cyrus' friends. Let's read on verse three. Now the Babylonians had an idol, because remember, Cyrus the Persian took over the Babylonian Empire. All right, so you have Babylonians, you know, they was ruling over them. But let's read this. It says, "Now the Babylonians had an idol called Bel." All right, and there were sent upon him every day twelve great measures of fine flour and forty sheep and six vessels of, of wine. So they had an idol that it was actually trying to, you know, they was feeding this idol, which is is an idol. What the scripture saying? Let's give us a Solomon quick. I believe it was in the Solomon um, 17 chapter, or maybe the 14. Let me see. Yeah, William Solomon 14. If you want to start our verse, I'm trying to get straight to the point with this. Let me see. This is what I want. Salakia. So uh, so the chapter is good. <clears throat> I'll just read this. All right. Was in Psalm 14 and verse 27. For the worshiping of idols and not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. For either they are mad, 
when they be merry or prophesy lies or live unjustly or else light, lightly forswear themselves. For in, this, and for in so much as their trust in, is in idols, which have no life. That's the point. These idols have no life. Man, they're not alive. They can't eat. They can't eat. None of that. Uh, though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be hurt. All right. How be it for both causes shall they be justly punished, both because they thought not well of the Most High, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly swore in deceit, despising holiness. All right. So that's the main point I want to get. How these idols have no life. So when we go back to this account in the book of Bella the Dragon, Bella and the Dragon, right? We have verse three. It says, now the Babylonians had an idol called Bell, and they were spent upon him every day, 12 great measures of fine flour and 40 sheep and six vessels of wine. And all that has vanity because it's an idol. The reverse four. And the king worshiped it and went daily to adore it. So the king was worshiping his idol, but Daniel worshiped his own power. He worshiped the Most High God, Yahweh. And the king said unto him, why does not thou worship Baal? Why are you not worshiping Baal? Who answered and said, Because I may not worship idols made with hands, but the living power who have created the heaven and the earth and have sovereignty over all flesh. Then said the king unto him, Thinkest thou not that Baal is a living power? Seest thou not how much he eateth and drinketh every day? <laughs> then Daniel smiled and said, O king, be not deceived, for this is but clay within and brass without. It did never eat or drink anything. It thinks this thing is not alive. It has no life. All right, verse 8. So the king was wroth and called for his priests and said unto them, If ye tell me not who this is that devoureth these expenses, ye shall die. But if ye can certify me that Bel devoureth them, then Daniel shall die. For he hath spoken blasphemy against Bel. And Daniel said unto the king, Let it be according to thy word. So, you know, self explanatory So the king basically said, Listen, yeah, I better pull, he told his priests, I better tell me. You know, who is devouring these expenses or, or y'all gonna be put to death or you better prove to me that it's Bell devouring them. And if that if you could do that, I'm gonna put Dan to death for his blasphemy. Verse 10. Now the priests of Bell were three score and ten beside their wives and children. It was three score. I believe it was, uh, is that 60? Score is 20. You have 60 and 10. Now. So there's 70 of them. All right. Besides um, their wives and children. And the king went with Daniel into the temple of Bell. So Bell's priest said, Lo, we go out, but thou, O king, set out on the meat and make ready the wine, shut the door fast and seal it with thine own signet. And tomorrow, when thou comest in, if thou findest not that Bell has eaten up all, we shall suffer death, or else Daniel that speaketh falsely against us. And they little regarded it, for under the table they had made a private entrance, whereby they entered in continually and consumed those things. So they made a, a like a secret entrance. All right, where they entered and continued, kept consuming those things to make it seem like it was Bell eating it up, which should show them that they, their own God was false. You know what I'm saying? Why you got to sneak in for your God and eat for his food? And they'll say, oh, there's deceiving the king. Verse 14. So when they were gone forth, the king set meats before Bell. Now Daniel had commanded his servants to bring ashes and those that uh, and those they strewed throughout all the temple in the presence of, of the king alone. And they went, and then went they out and shut the door and sealed it with the king's signet, so it departed. All right, so what did Daniel do? He commanded his servants to bring ashes. We're going to find out why. All right. Oh, as it says, and those they strewed throughout all the temple in the presence of the king alone. So only the king saw them sprinkle those ashes, all right, around um, all throughout the temple of Bel. Why did he do that? We're going to find out. Verse 15. Now in the sick, and now in the night came the priests with their wives and children, and they will, and they as they were wont to do and did eat and drink up all in the morning time in the morning but uh be time the king arose and daniel with him and the king said daniel are the seals whole and he said yea o king they be whole and as, and as soon as he opened the door the king looked upon the table and cried with a loud voice great art thou o bell and with thee is no deceit at all then laughed daniel <laughs> right so basically from that front entrance no one opened it I remember they made a private entrance and that's how they got inside. So when he said, you see it's still um, sealed, Daniel was like, yeah. He opened the door, saw all the food gone and he praised his, his idol. And then Daniel laughed at him, let's read on. And held the king that he should go, he should not go in and said, behold, now the pavement, the mark well those footsteps are, <laughs> it's like it. And mark well whose footsteps are these. And the king said, I see the footsteps of men, women, and children. And, they, and then the king was angry. 
and took the priests with their wives and children and sh who shewed him the private doors where they came in and consumed such things as, as were upon the table. Therefore the king slew them and delivered Bel into Daniel's power who destroyed him and his temple. So Daniel destroyed the temple and Bel. You see, verse 23. And, I, and in that same place, there was a great dragon which they of Babylon worship, another idol. And the king said unto Daniel, Will thou also say this is of brass? Lo, he liveth, he eateth and drinketh. Thou canst not say that he is no living God. Therefore worship him. Then said Daniel to the king, I will worship the Lord my God, for he is the living power. See, that's the God that we serve, man. All right? The living power, Yahweh, And we serve him through his son, Yahweh Shad. So brothers, remember these accounts, man. We now get down with Esau's new world order, down anything these devils are um, promoting, man. We're going to serve our God, man, even unto death. If he's facing death, Daniel was just facing death. He, he, kept, he kept faith. He smiled it off. He laughed because <laughs> he knew. All right, let's read on verse 26. But give me leave, O king, and I shall slay this dragon without sword or staff. Um, the king said, I give thee leave. Then Daniel took pitch and fat and hair and deceived them together and made lumps thereof. This he put in the dragon's mouth, and so the dragon burst in sunder. And Daniel said, Lo, these are the gods you worship. He put that shit, you know, he, he uh, burned that shit up. All right. Verse 28. When the when they of Babylon heard that, they took great indignation and conspired against the king, saying, The king is become a Jew. <laughs> so now they all say, Now he become like a Jew, man. They, they put in all idols, you know, to, to death. You know, destroying Baal, destroying the dragon, right? And he destroyed Baal and have slain the dragon. And put the priest to death. So they came to the king and said, Deliver us Daniel, or else we will destroy thee in thine house. And when the king saw that they pressed him sore, being constrained, he delivered Daniel to them, who cast him in the lion's den where he was six days. And in the den there were seven lions, and they had given them every day two carcasses and two sheep, which then were not given to them to the intent that they might devour Daniel. They wanted the lions to kill Daniel, man, eat Daniel. So the lions was hungry, man, right? Verse 33, this is the miraculous deliverance. Verse 33, now there was a Druvy, a prophet called Habakkuk, who had made pottage and had broken bread in a bowl and was going into the field for to bring it to the reapers. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, go carry the dinner that thou hast into Babylon unto Daniel, who was in the lion's den. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know what a den is. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown and bare him by the hair of his head and through the vehemency of his spirit set him in Babylon over the den. So he teleported the prophet Habakkuk there. Remember, Habakkuk was making food to give it to the reapers. The angel told him, bring that to Daniel and the lion's den in Babylon. He said, I don't know what I said. And he teleported him there. Now, verse 37, and Habakkuk cried, saying, O Daniel, Daniel, take the dinner which the Most High have, which the Most High have sent thee. And Daniel said, Thou hast remembered me, O Most High, neither hast thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. So Daniel arose and did eat. And the angel of the Lord said, Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. Upon the seventh day, the king went to bewail Daniel, right? And when he came, he thought Daniel was dead. Remember, it was pretty close. And you start up some. All right, brothers, if you don't, um, so he thought Daniel was dead. And upon the seventh day, the king went to be well, Daniel. And when he came to the den, he looked in, and behold, Daniel was sitting. Then cried the king with a loud voice, saying, Great art the Lord God of Daniel, and there is none else beside thee. So, another point I want to get was how uh, Daniel said, What thou hast remembered me, all right, thou hast remembered me. And he said, What neither hast thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. At verse 38, so in these last days, brothers, we have to remember these accounts. Because most of them do even more things for us in these times as well. And, you know, I may do some more um, lessons, you know, going to different deliverances throughout, you know, um, our history. All right. But let's finish, finish this out. Verse 41. Then cried the king with a loud voice, saying, Great art the Lord God of Daniel, and there is none other beside thee. And he drew him out and cast those that were, in, that were the cause of destruction to the den, and they were devoured in a moment before his face, man. So they got put to death. They, the lions, they, they ass up. All right. So, man, listen, in these last days, we have to remember these accounts. All right. Let's get another quick precept. We'll end up with this. Sirach 2 and verse 10. Look at the generations of old and see 
Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering, and very pitiful, and forgive of sins, and saveth in time of affliction, man. You see that? One more precept I just thought about. Psalms 50 and 15, it says, And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. All right? So, Lord willing, was edified through the spirit of Pai Mount Shai. Spirit was on me to rebel in the dragon. Get that account, you know, with Daniel. You know what I'm saying? His faith. All right? Had the most I delivered him. All right? We gave, gave him food. You know, all that and destroyed idols in the, in the, in the, um, at the same time. So in these last days, we got to have, to have that same faith and prepare for these miraculous deliverances. All right. So with that, let's give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Dash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Without a message, Shalom. Wa Baba Baal, Shalom.